Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to look at Girl Defined. Hey, it's Kristen and Bethany here with Girl Defined Ministries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we find mm -hmm. into this actually mm -hmm. on the inside so many of us feel lonely. Mm -hmm. and a lot of us, mm -hmm. yeah. So we long for connection. How do we find it? How do we get there? We're gonna unpack all of that today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the girl defined books this is partly because i was on reddit and i saw a random reddit thread about how one of the girl defined women bethany beal is very toxic in her marriage and to her husband to the point that the husband had a live and was saying about how much his mental health had been suffering and he had to go to therapy and all of this to alleviate the tension in our relationship i would take on basically the weight and the blame of everything in the conversation. So she said, you know, you did this to me, uh, or you, you know, you're uncaring or something like that. And I would basically get to this point in the conversation after arguing for a while or after trying to reason, uh, I would get to this point and be like, you're right. I'm the most selfish. Be like, okay, she's, you know, she thinks I'm selfish. So I'm going to basically admit, you know, I'm the most selfish. I have all of these problems, right? But what it, it, those conversations would end up being devastating for me. And it got kind of started to get worse. And I started to have these suicidal fantasies. <laughs> so they call it passive suicidal ideation, where you're not really about to end your life, but you are fantasizing about it. What made my fantasy compelling was how bad Bethany would feel if, uh, if I were no longer here. So I thought, on that lovely note, let's go through one of the Girl Defined books. Now, disclaimer, right? I am fine with people having faith. I'm agnostic, I, I don't care. Believe what you want as long as it doesn't subjugate others. That's my ethical code. I don't care otherwise. In regards to this book, I looked up on Goodreads and there are actually plenty of Christians complaining that the book was trash. So, so, bear in mind. This video is sponsored by Balesa. Balesa is a bi woman company for all things adult. And together we're doing a massive sex toy giveaway, so stay tuned for more details. Balesa's mission is to empower everyone to explore, embrace, and celebrate their sexuality. And each Balesa product is crafted by the highest quality, 100% body safe premium materials. My friends at Balesa and I are sending out free vibrators and gift cards for vibrators for everyone who signs up to my giveaway. And here we have the Air Vibe. It's made of silicon, it's waterproof, it's rechargeable and has two motors, and it has vibration and suction. Mmm, that is tiny, isn't it? You could put that in your handbag if you were so inclined. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Isn't that cute? It's charged by micro USB, in case any of you cared about that. Look at that. Can't do that with a penis, can you? The Air Vibe has dual stimulation. Clitoral, G-spot. It comes in a very discreet casing. You take that on the go of you and no one would know what you've got in your pocket. Is that a vibrator you've got in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? And it's also silent, but deadly. So make sure you use my special link in the description box below because everyone who signs up to my giveaway with Belessa wins something. Thank you, Belessa, for sponsoring today's video. Part one, femininity gone wrong. Can't wait. Chapter one, bullied by the big bagged checklist. My heart pounded inside my chest. I, brackets Kristen. So this book is co-written by the sisters and they do this throughout the entire book, the brackets, instead of maybe just making like a subheading and writing Kristen or Bethany in like italics, or whatever. So it's already amateur hour. Kristen is at a modeling agency. Oh, hey girl, coming in. She said with a glossy lipped smile, you must be Kristen. She extended a hand and I noticed her red nails, flashy bracelets and blingy rings. Red nails like satan run Kristen, run my mouth was desert dry just like when jesus was in the desert for 14 days and 40 nights in brackets come back to this nope it was just like that time that jesus did that thing <sighs> bethany is also at a modeling interview no comment bethany's modeling interview hi my name jeff my name is jeff sorry Take a seat, please, he said in a flat tone. I, Bethany, slowly sat down in the plush t t 
tan chair, plush tan chair, plush tan chair, plush tan chair. Yes, Bethany, we know it's you speaking because it said Bethany's modeling interview. We're not stupid, babe. I scanned the photos and began noticing an unsettling theme. Every model wore an outfit a few square inches shy of nudity. Do you think that God is knocking about in heaven wearing clothes? Nudity was fine for Adam and Eve until they became self-conscious after they bit into the apple. So is nakedness next to godliness. Bethany, I could be a better Christian than you in 10 seconds and it shows. What type of modeling are you the most interested in doing? The opening question asked. My heart picked up the pace as I scanned the options. Swimsuit modeling, lingerie modeling, promo modeling, other. Why is she getting a modeling interview in the first place? I don't believe that this happened. It's because they're both really, like, not really, are they? I think it's just because she's tall. She's like six foot. Believe it or not, becoming models wasn't always a major dream for the two of us. It was more of a vague idea, an intriguing road to try, a glamorous future to imagine. What brought us to these interviews began many years ago with a tiny seed, a thought planted, an idea mentioned. That is a whole lot of words just to say one single thing. We thought it would be interesting. <sighs> This book is annoying already. Is there not a rule in the Bible about women not being able to yap this much? It was a warm summer afternoon in Texas. In other words, it was 98 degrees. I, Kristen, was walking with my mum for an outdoor shopping mall. Tall for my age, 12 at the time. What is with all these brackets? Will you calm down? Kristen gets scouted. Your long legs and blonde hair would make great model material, she said excitedly. She introduced herself and explained that she and her husband worked specifically with young models, ages 10 to 16, preparing them for a career in the industry. They owned a large house in Dallas and many of their young modeling recruits lived with them. That doesn't sound okay. They don't do it, but it plants the seed. From the time we were little girls until now, our culture has been feeding us messages of what womanhood is all about. So throughout this book, I consistently feel like they are almost going to get close to the point, but end up missing it entirely each time. One year, our culture strongly encourages us to get married at a certain age. Then five years later, the age has changed. One year, we are considered successful if we graduate with an undergrad degree. Then several years later, we need a master's degree to be deemed truly successful. Then live how you want to live and to hell with with anyone who says otherwise, do what you want, except for murder. In short, absolutely not, no way. Our culture's version of womanhood is a far, and we mean far, cry from the God who designed us to be. And there we go. It's giving life and the universe is scary and I don't know what I'll do. So I'll just let someone else decide it all for me. And the reason that we're not feminists and what we're about to share with you is because feminism at its core, and we know there are so many definitions out there, yeah. but at its core, feminism has tried to define womanhood on its own terms. It's not just yeah. about women's equality with men, it's about redefining womanhood altogether according to man's and women's terms rather than how God defines our womanhood. Yeah, there are good ideas here and there, but if you're gonna embrace it as a whole, mm -hmm. you really do have to become your own God and say, no, I'm going to define my womanhood. Sorry, God, I know better than you. This is what I need to have. We as women say, we want when it comes to our sexuality, our identity, our beauty, our value, our yeah. worth, what we define in those areas is what we say goes rather than saying, okay, hold up, what does God's word say? Now I'm gonna align yeah. my life and my womanhood according to his truth. The reason we wrote this book is to give you a radically better vision for what true womanhood is all about. The only hope we have as women is to stop defining ourselves according to other people's standards and start defining it according to God's word. In order to become all God created you to be, you have to gain a vision for what true God-defined femininity is all about. Ladies, your Bible was written by a bunch of old crusty, dusty men. Do you really think that's going to be the best representation of womanhood? ideals from a bunch of old dead dudes? Or do they think that the Bible was actually written by God? Because I'm very sure there are some people who think that God like took pen to paper, parchment, feather, quill to parchment, and wrote the Bible. Oh dear. As a result of following God's plan, we can honestly say we are each happier, more fulfilled, and more content than we've ever been in our lives. Bethany, isn't your husband completely miserable because of you? Throughout the pages of this book, you will discover why God created the female gender. I can't wait to hear all the science. Chapter one, study guide. Oh, so there's study guides as well. So you can study along in your own time with this book. It's very interactive, I'll give it that. Stop defining your femininity according to the culture and start defining it according to God's word. Or who the hell is God to judge me, huh? There's a fun questionnaire type thing to fill out. I can see that I haven't. Here we go. How old were you when you started to care about being pretty? What prompted you to start caring? Um, I've always been pretty, so I don't need to care about it. That is so untrue. I mean, I'm not even pretty now. 
I'm just joking with you guys. When I was younger, I used to look like Severus Snape. And now I just look like no fielding in a wig. Every woman has a big bad checklist. Check all the boxes that apply to you. I've sought to find my identity and worth through being perfectly skinny, having a pretty face, maintaining a successful career, keeping a boyfriend, getting married, being independent, owning nice things, wearing latest trends, traveling to nice places, being athletic, accomplishing, covering many friends. Other. I selected other. This is how I've sought to find my identity and worth through. Finally beating the tyranny of outer space by destroying the moon via nukes. I am not joking. The OGs of this channel know that I hate the moon, despise it. Who is it? Bossing us around, affecting the tides, turning people into werewolves. Had enough. What are your biggest insecurities right now? Losing brain cells from reading this. What do you think will bring you lasting worth and satisfaction? The sex toy sponsor that I put on this video. Can't do that with a penis, can you? Name three things you are hoping to learn by reading this book. First you get the sugar, then you get the power, then you get the women. How to get the sugar, the power, and then the women. To start things off, take a moment right now to pray and ask God to help you get the most out of this book. Dear God, please invest $1 billion into a Lazy Yeezy ideas. Chapter two. This chapter opens with Marilyn Monroe's biography and how despite all of her fame and success, she wasn't happy. Yeah, well, Bethany, despite all of your praying, you aren't that happy either, are you? I'd rather be rich and miserable than stuck in your loveless marriage and miserable. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not being too mean. They're the fundamentalists. They're creationists. They're those types of, they probably think the earth is 6,000 years old. So it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not going too far. Where did Marilyn's life take its first wrong turn? It most likely happened where many of us take our first wrong turn. It all started the moment she allowed the culture to define her womanhood. And you know what? They almost have something here. Something about how if you allow the external to define you, then you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to be comfortable within yourself to learn to be happy. That's what I think. The moment the culture's ideas filled her checklist. The moment God's design for femininity was dismissed from her vocabulary. Wait, wait, no, she went wrong because she didn't allow the most external idea ever to define her, aka God. Unlike Marilyn, the two of us grew up in a Christian family with involved parents. Softball, basketball, swimming, piano, guitar, gymnastics, awana, ballet. We did it all. All right, brag. And our parents, along with our six siblings, Michael, Stephen, Elissa, Tiffany, Tim, Tim, Timothy. Rebecca and Susanna were right there cheering us on. Being homeschooled also brought our large family closer together. Homeschooling is hilarious to me because the arrogance of parents to assume they can adequately cover all of their children's educational needs is full. I could never be that arrogant, but I aspire to be. I didn't realize your parents were also physicists. Oh wait. Bethany and Kristen. As we entered our teen years and began venturing farther from the nest of home, our parents became cautious about the friends we hung out with. They intentionally got us involved in church activities so we'd be surrounded by godly influences. Between homeschooling, playing basketball, working at a Christian bookstore and being heavily involved in our church, we were busy girls. So you didn't get to interact with others who thought differently from you. Sounds like a cult to me. Then we had our casual group. These were the people we didn't really hang out with unless a social event united us. You know what we're talking about. I never have any idea what you two are talking about. Something regarding Jesus and his disciples, no doubt. All friends considered. We grew up in a group of around 30 Christian girls. Each of these girls came from Christian homes. Each of these girls claimed to love Jesus. They desired to honor God with their lives. They each believed in things like purity, saving sex until marriage, and dressing with decency. We loved having so many like-minded friends. Cult, 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 cult. We watched some of our godliest friends turn into complete atheist heavens to Betsy, not the A word. We saw other friends reject purity and dive headfirst into sexual relationships. Some got married and then quickly divorced. A couple of single friends got pregnant out of wedlock. We also witnessed quiet friends turn into raunchy party animals. Yeah, that's what happens when you heavily repress people and then don't educate them on what the real world is like. As we each traveled down different paths, the identity checklist followed us. The culture's version of womanhood began softly whispering in our ears. Sex before marriage isn't really that bad. Come on, have a little fun. Just have a few more drinks. You'll like getting drunk. Don't be so stiff about your clothes. Loosen up a little. Embrace your seductive side. Getting married is a thing of the past. There's no harm in living with your boyfriend. <laughs> the Bible was written 2000 years ago. Be a little more progressive. <laughs> We're still holding on to God's, I mean, wasn't one of the recent popes more progressive than this? Like he was fine with gay people because, well, God created them, so. And he was fine with 
aliens because well god created them too did i imagine that was that a fever dream i swear down one of the popes is more progressive than this rubbish we're still holding on to god's word of all of our might we're clinging to his truths we're still trusting that his plan for our womanhood is better than hollywood's why does it have to be one or the other why one extreme to the next why can't you make your own decisions without being influenced by hollywood or a two thousand year old book written by some dead dudes also do you think the girls think that Jesus was white and spoke English? Do you think they're like that type of Christian? Apart from God, lasting peace and happiness do not exist. That is why Marilyn's search never ended. Even with God, lasting peace does not exist because you and many other religions are locked in an eternal battle of my God is the best and I'm gonna prove it by killing anyone who disagrees. Study guide. What stands out to you about Marilyn Monroe's life? That she was murdered by the CIA because Kennedy told her the truth about UFOs. Why do you think Marilyn, a woman who had everything, still felt unfulfilled? Because mental health services were non-existent and she had drug addictions. Were well, you, you dumb? Yes. Pull out your Bible and look up Romans 12 too. How can this verse help you avoid an outcome like Marilyn's? Romans 12 too, the new international version. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So I guess renew your mind, take LSD. Chapter three. I, Kristen, recognize Katie Jones. I wouldn't have said it out loud, but I was jealous of her. I wanted to have what she had, the confidence, the independence, the beauty, the sexy body. I described her in the same way a guy says he's the man, only I said, she's the woman. Kristen, do you fancy Katie? Fast forward 10 years to now, Katie is still very independent. She still appears confident. She's still on top of all the fashion trends. To the public eye, she looks put together, but behind the scenes, she's falling apart. This is a bit rude to put in a book about someone that you know, isn't it? According According to Thing 1 and Thing 2, there are three pillars of counterfeit femininity. Number one, liberation. <laughs> now imagine what happened when Brandon asked me, do you think you could be happy as a wife and a mother? Would you be willing to give up some of your ministry projects in the future if you needed to? Wow, not a cool question. I spun around in my swivel chair, looked him in the eyes and said in my feistiest tone, I really can't imagine my life without my ministry and book projects. I hope that whoever I marry will be supportive of my unique gifts and talents. Somehow, Bethany having goals outside of marriage and kids is seen as a bad thing. Bethany, how did you manage to devolve in front of our very eyes? In my heart, I'd come to believe that my worth was found in my accomplishments outside of my home and family. I thought, being a wife and mother is okay, but real women are doing more. They're getting jobs, running big ministries, traveling. Tra traveling is a bad thing, according to the you lobotomites. Also, do you know what's funny? She now is a wife and a mother and she puts up quite a few passive aggressive um, Instagram posts. And so I did some research for this video. I didn't go into things blind. Yeah, she has put up a lot of passive aggressive things about being a wife and a mother. So not all you thought it was cracked up to be, huh, Bethany? Funny that. How are you doing postpartum? Way better than I was with Davey. Yeah. So sweet. Good. Yeah, it was burning with Davey was really hard. That was probably the hardest time in our both of our lives as a married couple. <sighs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really, really difficult. He was just a really unhappy baby and breastfeeding was really hard and we just weren't sleeping at all. And it was just really, really, really hard. We were newer in our relationship. Everything was just difficult. Pillar two is independence. This is a sign of counterfeit femininity independence this is pathetic i took pride in my ability to fend for myself i was a capable woman yes being able to take care of yourself and not be a burden unto others is bad apparently <laughs> the more i embrace that mindset the more my marriage but like what are you going to do if it's the apocalypse what are you ladies going to do hmm pray i'm gonna be out there fighting i'll do boxing now i'm gonna be a raider if it's the apocalypse like the rest of you guys are effed right I will be the king of the post-apocalyptic wasteland whilst these two girls are busy praying. Uh, the more I embrace that mindset, the more my marriage spun in circles. Having a, though, like, they seem to me like traditionalists, right? So are they growing their own food? Are they doing all of that like crap? Milking their own cows? I don't think so. 
commit to the bit, ladies. The more I embraced that mindset, the more my marriage spun in circles. Having a self-sufficient attitude left me with a weak and strained relationship. It left me feeling defensive towards Zach. It left me with a chip on my shoulder and a desire to prove myself. Pursuing independence was stressful and unfulfilling. This is Kristen, because Kristen is the one who's married at the time of this uh, writing this, whereas Bethany is not. But you know that you can do both, right? You can do things independently and also work as a team. You know, jobs, look for that on your CV, yeah? That you can work well independently and you're also a team player. If Girl Defined cracks up tomorrow and she can't work in her family's business, what's she going to do? Probably make her husband do everything. Make me ill. However, this lifestyle is not what God intended for us as women. It is very presumptuous of you, a woman, to know what God intends for anyone. Thousands of years ago, and I'm sure you would have been in trouble for that. In fact, in the good old days of Jesus's time, you wouldn't even be able to read or write. So why don't you do us all a favor and go be illiterate somewhere else? I'm so mean. Pillar three is sexual freedom. Fast forward a few years to when the two of us were in our early 20s standing at a soda fountain in a local restaurant. What is a soda fountain? Is it literally like a water fountain, but with Coca-Cola instead? Oh, what, one of those? That's just a drinks machine. Pfft, God, America. You're always like raising my hopes and then dashing me of reality. A fountain with Coke coming out of it would be awesome. Local restaurant, a totally random lady walked up to us. Excuse me, I just had to come up and tell you girls how much I love your height. Are you models? Oh, you're so sweet, I, Bethany replied. But no, we aren't models. What a shame, she said, shaking her head. Well, let me offer you two girls some advice. Don't let those bodies go to waste. Seriously, use it and own it. Uh, okay, thanks, I replied, glancing at Kristen. The pressure to use our sexual freedom had hit us again. No, you are just in America, AKA the land of unsolicited opinions. Said by me, a British person giving unsolicited opinions. The third pillar, sexual freedom, pushes women towards one thing, proving their worth with their bodies. Counterfeit femininity says that real women are sexy, hot, free, edgy, and wild. No, true feminism says dress how you want and in what makes you feel comfortable and only do things that make you feel comfortable. You don't have to be shagging around to prove some sort of, you don't, you don't have to like be a, a prude sounds mean, but you, you don't have to be repressed to prove about, do what you're comfortable with. That's it, except for murders. See, like with these people, they're so extreme because it's either like one side fully or the other. Where's the nuance? Where's the middle ground? Where's the fence sitting? Where's the enlightened centrism, huh? Personally, neither of us liked the results that counterfeit femininity produced in our lives. It never satisfied us or delivered what it had promised. Women ac all across the world are experiencing the same thing. They've built their lives on the foundation of counterfeit femininity and are unhappy with those <laughs> results. By all across the world, do you guys just mean America? Considering there are many places where women are second-class citizens, are controlled, are coerced, are repressed. Maybe if you guys actually did some traveling, you'd broaden your perspectives. Who are the Katie Joneses in your life? In what ways do you compare yourself to them? When you see women's magazines displayed in a store, what thoughts run through your mind? Write down four ways magazine images have affected your view of womanhood. Four ways, four ways. Um, well, with magazines like Take, Break, Chat, and That's Life, I'm always surprised to see the women so happy with headlines on top, like, he burnt my house down and stole my children. My husband had sex with our cat. That's always a bit surprising. The women on the front, they always look so happy. Weird. Chapter four. Bethany and I were both in our early 20s and desperately curious. The seed that had taken root in our hearts as young girls was finally coming to bloom. We wanted to explore the modelling world. Kristen starts whinging about how she couldn't do modelling without sacrificing her morals so her work dried up. Oh, boo-hoo. Pour me. Pour me. Pour me another drink. Am I meant to feel bad for you? You were living at home, not working a full-time job, trying to pursue a dream. Do you realize how out of touch you are? In my early 20s, I was already moved out, living in London, working to keep a roof over my head. Broke all the time. Thousands of young adults don't have the privilege of living with parents and not working properly or contributing to the household. Go cry someone else. With our dreams of modeling finally put to rest, it was time to seriously consider God's purpose and plan for our lives. So not time to get a real job then. There's a boring analogy about hiking and picking bad paths. Choosing to do this book was like picking a path full of spikes and bears. We couldn't do everything according to what mummy and daddy said. Our beliefs had to guide us. We had to own our choices. Make your own choices by following a 2000 year old book. Okay, right. And again, I'm fine with people being religious. I am friends with 
many different types of people following different faiths, whether it be Christianity, Islam, Judaism. I've got all sorts of people in my life. Edgy atheists. I don't mind because all the people that I know are just normal people about it. They're not demanding that you do this, that and the other and blah, blah, blah. One of my best friends is a girl and a Christian. I might send this to her and see what she thinks. <laughs> I think she's gonna think it's a little rubbish too. Reach asked, God, how do you want me to use my femininity for your glory? Imagine God turns around and says, start an OnlyFans study guide. Have you ever stopped to think about the path your life is on? No. If you stay on your current path, where will you end up five years down the road? Probably a lobotomite from reading all this crap. We challenge you to take some time over the next seven days to pray about your current path as well as your future plans. Dear God, please let me win the Euro Millions so I no longer need to debase myself by reading this nonsense for money anymore. After much prayer, we each realised God had given us a passion for ministering to women. What passions and gifts has God given to you? Sadomasochism, clearly. Chapter 5 Gender, you are oh so magnificent. Oh boy. Imagine walking into a clothing store and the sales clerk approaches you and says, welcome to our store, sir or ma'am. Shocked, you raise your eyebrows and say, um, I'm a ma'am, not a sir. Oh, pardon me, he says apologetically. I just didn't want to assume. Better safe than sorry these days. Okay, so this just wouldn't happen, would it? If they didn't want to assume your gender, they would simply say, welcome to our store, full stop. That's it. What imaginary hill are you trying to die on? Because it's not based in reality. The taxpayer funded preschool, Egalia, has decided that gender specific language and actions are damaging to children and society. Instead of referring to children as boys and girls or using pronouns such as him and her, staff members refer to everyone as friends. Well, so actually I find this incredibly offensive. Never ever assume that I am your friend. I hate everyone equally. Gender neutral bathrooms. I'm gonna blow both the girls' minds right now. You know your bathroom at home that you share with your husband and children? It's gender neutral. Instead of promoting our beautiful and unique design as women, we're told it's really not that special. Nothing is special. Everything is chaos and rubbish. I actually love doing this. The ultra religious people meeting me, an extreme nihilist, an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. We don't have to be the same as men to have value and equality. It's so funny how close they are to actually getting it because you're right, we should have the same value and equality as men. They get so close to actually being sort of feminist, but then they get scared and fall back onto God and God's will. Women don't know how to be women anymore. Marriages are in shambles. Relationships are spiraling downward. Homes are more like hotels. Kitchens are more like drive throughs What are you talking about? So they start talking about the story of Adam and Eve. And I get the impression that they really think that God made a man out of dirt. Do they not? Well, of course they're not going to know this, are they? But do they not know that that story is entirely derivative of the Mesopotamian story of the first humans being made by the gods, plural, out of clay? Of course they don't know that because they're uneducated and potentially illiterate. That remains to be seen. His eyes locked onto a mysterious creature standing before him. She was breathtaking. Adam's mouth dropped open as he realized what this incredible creature was. Is that actually the biblical verse? Does it actually say that his mouth dropped open? Because I've read some of the Bible and it's a lot of like, Yeshua, son of Joshua, begat son of blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of that. Feeling his side, it clicked. She was for him. He jumped to his feet and excitedly exclaimed, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Genesis 2.23. Wait, so this is funny because you know that dusty old men back then had to control everything about women, their autonomy, their sexuality. So having the creation myth be women were made from man as another way to make us subservient to them is hilarious because, drum roll please, women create men. Women give birth to men, not the other way around. We aren't coming out of penises. Well, technically the sperm is, but you understand what I mean. I'm wondering if Jerusalem had been maybe a ma more matriarchal society, whether the creation myth would have been that women were created first and then the men came out of the women. Who knows? Anyway, do you ever wonder what those first moments in the garden looked like? <laughs> 
No, not really. Do you ever wonder what Adam and Eve looked like? We wonder those things all the time. Were they tall, short, fair-skinned, dark-skinned? Would we consider him handsome and her beautiful? Were their teeth sparkly white? So many questions. Whatever they looked like, they were perfect. We do know that much. They were made from God's hands. It was at this point that I realised that the girls are creationists. I didn't realise it up until now. It explained everything to me. I had no respect for them before and I have even less respect than that now. He could have simplified things by creating only one gender, but why would such a complex god want to do that? He's way too creative. Yeah, so creative that he created leukemia in young children, hooray! Everybody's so creative. Instead, he created some diversity, some excitement, and yet you guys hate it when things are a bit more diverse? If God didn't want transgender people, then why did he create them, huh? Or do you think of it like dinosaur fossils and that Satan has done it all to test your faith? Because you guys are testing my faith, dude. Adam and Eve's marriage was a perfect union full of blissful harmony. Eve respected her husband unconditionally and he cherished her unreservedly. Life was perfect, literally. You know when these types of people harking back to this good old days that never really existed? Well, they're re-referencing as the time where girls were married off by the age of 14 and their husbands would beat them. I, Kristen, really enjoyed dancing. Dancing is a mating ritual put here on earth by Satan, you sinner. Both are equally valuable to God. In fact, when God created the human race, do you know what he said? Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Bam, case closed. <laughs> yes, every single compelling argument for our history has ended with bam, case closed. I despise this book. Bam. Case closed. You are being intellectually deficient. These girls are every single boomer who loses an argument on Facebook and says, end of. Also, sorry, how boring is your religion? Man created in God's image. So God is just some bloke up there sitting around. How mundane. Your God has nothing on my boy Anubis. The book of Genesis proves that the school in Sweden has it all wrong. <laughs> Saying the book of Genesis proves anything wrong is hilarious. Do you know what? I'm really censoring my script because I put in a lot of swear words and a lot of just downright insults. You're welcome. By that same logic, my special secret book of commencement proves both of you wrong because it both says that you have little beans for brains. And now you're not allowed to see my book, it's private, like that Mormon one. Fast forward to today, and we're still reaping the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin. I can't believe that I didn't know that they are creationists, because even Jordan Peterson, who is incredibly religious, says that those stories are metaphors and not literal. You pair of donuts. Study guide. Who or what is influencing your worldview about gender? On a scale of one to 10, how much are each of the following areas influencing you? TV shows, music, secular books, Christian books, movies, school, mu uh, work, co-workers. Funny how, um, science isn't on there. Chapter six, there are three pillars of biblical womanhood. Number one is helping others. Check out how short and sweet the dictionary defines the word helper. Someone who helps another person with a job or task. Ladies, that's our title in a nutshell. We are designed to find purpose in not only helping our husbands or future husbands. We also have to help accept Satan into our lives as our true Lord and savior. That is exactly what God had in mind when he created Eve. He was creating her to be absolutely and utterly indispensable. He was creating her as Adam's opposite. He was creating her to help Adam bring glory to God. Ultimately, Adam's role as the leader and Eve's role as the helper have the same underlying purpose. It's all about serving and pointing others to Christ. So two things here. If God is so glorious and perfect, then why does he need to create two me measly humans to help bring him to glory? And number two, how was Adam and Eve's roles to point people to Christ when other people, including Christ, did not exist yet? What are you talking about? Where is your heart in all of this? Do you want to fully accept the title helper? Do you want to bring God glory by helping others succeed? No. Pillar two, producing life. As the result of the fall, not every woman is physically capable of carrying and birthing a child. Yes, because Eve ate the apple once, some women are now infertile. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of censorship, right? I think that it can go too far. Sue me. Some people would want to censor me because I swear a little bit. Know what I mean? But I do have to kind of point out that it's funny that conspiracy theorists, take your pick, right? 
are banned from YouTube, but then there's this misinformation slash anti-science rubbish that's allowed to run amok because saying that because someone ate an apple once and got expelled from the Garden of Eden, Eden, that is why some women can't conceive children, that's just anti-science rubbish. That's, that's just not true, is it? So why is it some people are banned from spreading misinformation, but other people aren't banned? I'm genuinely curious here. I'm not trying to be loaded or point fingers and be like, well, like all of it's okay or none of it's okay. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just, I, I want to know where is the line because surely religious freedom isn't above the rules of YouTube, is it? I mean, you even mentioned reptilians and the little like Wikipedia thing comes up onto YouTube, like real facts about the origins of the reptilians. So, as an example, right? What if I had a religion that told me to be a pandemic conspiracy theorist? I would still end up getting banned, wouldn't I? For peddling lies and misinformation. So why is this blatant nonsense? Where's the line? I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. And before any of you wonder or ask or conjecture, I only care about conspiracy theories about aliens and ancient aliens. That's it, really. The rest of them, I don't care about because they're not, they're just miserable, aren't they? Oh, the world is being ran by evil demon people. It's just like not interesting to me. I'd rather imagine that, I don't know, aliens secretly live on Mars. It's more fun. Psalm 113.9 says, he gives the child this woman a household, making her the joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. HCSB. I don't know what that is. Is that some sort of like TV station? God gives the child this woman spiritual children through the lives she impacts. God gives us different gifts and callings. The gift of marriage is not given to every woman, nor is the gift of bearing children. It is not a given that every woman will marry or that married women will be able to bear children. What is a given that is that all women are called to be spiritual fru spiritually fruitful. The Lord wants all women, including single and childless women and women past childbearing age, to have a household and be the joyful mother of children. I said that I don't hate this part, but then I read the Lord wants all women. So actually I do hate this part. But the reason I initially didn't hate this part is because there's there's too many toxic men out there with podcasts who view women who want kids but are infertile as lesser for it. Or they make out that they're not worth being with if they can't bear children themselves and God forbid they'd want to adopt, yeah? I was choosing to read that as inclusive and I said, don't take it away from me, but I'm taking it away from me now because it said the Lord wants all women. So that includes the women who want to be child free. Oh no, they're selfish. And I'm like, shut up. So even the mindset of like children are a burden, don't yeah. have them until you have to have them. There's even this mindset of like control of like, yeah. okay, well, I want to have children when I'm ready. Uh -huh. And then once I'm ready, I'm going to have them on my schedule, my time. It really is still so selfish all about me. I mean, like, wow, things have taken yes. such a downward spiral, in my opinion, a very yeah. dark turn. When we as women choose to produce life, spiritual or physical, we imitate our savior, Jesus Christ. He chose to give up his life. How's that imitating? He didn't have kids, did he? Or did he? Mary Magdalene, who knows? So we as sinners could have eternal life. In the same way, when we give our time, service and mentorship, we produce life as well. So I changed my mind three times whilst writing this. Initially, I said, I was expecting to hate this bit because I thought it would be, you have to pop out kids 24 seven or your life as a woman is worthless, but really I don't mind it. They've used the word like choose and spiritual life, which I'm choosing to believe is inclusive to adoptive kids compared to the other parts, I don't mind this at all. Then I changed my mind. Oh, apparently one of the sisters, Kristen is infertile. That's definitely what's influenced this line of thinking, but it's still a nicer message to put out in a world of toxic men only valuing women by if they could incubate kids and if they will let them cheat on them repeatedly. <laughs> and then the third time I changed my mind is when I found out that they think child free by choice people are evil. So never mind everything I just said, shut up. Wow, things have taken yes. such a downward spiral. Pillar free, nurturing relationships. Recently, our mom told us she was meeting up with a friend at a coffee shop. Typically, when either of us thinks of a coffee date with one of our girlfriends, we imagine a good two to three hour talk. Not our mum. Her coffee dates typically last from six to eight hours. She knows how to communicate like a pro. That sounds exhausting. Just look around and you'll quickly see the results of this relational bent. Have you ever noticed how women often travel in packs or at least in pairs to restrooms? Why is that? Because we like being together no matter where we are. It's such a female thing. Can you image men doing that? Never. No, I can't image men doing that. Also, women travel in packs because it's safer. You dummies. <sighs> women can meet for the first time and before you know it, they are pulling out tissues and crying together. I have literally never done that in my life, ever. The 18th century American poet, William Ross Wallace, wrote a famous poem titled, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle Is The Hand That Ruled The World. 
Yeah, that is absolutely nothing compared to the hit 21st century poem, Dear Putin, if I was your mother. Oh dear Mr. President Putin, if only I'd been your mother. Perhaps the torture of unwritten youth would not within your heart imbue ascription to such fealty against that world that you thought was so cruel. Perhaps you would hold dear human life and on this night, instead of Mother Russia, you would call me and I would set your mind quite free with the love that only a mother can give and only a mother can take away. Study guide. What do you think is the distinct purpose of being a woman? Well, if sex in the city have taught me anything, um, buying shoes. Nurture a relationship. Send one encouraging note, text or email to someone today. You don't know me at all, do you? Chapter seven. So Kristen is infertile and since this book she has adopted, but apparently Bethany, I hear all of this from Rachel by the way, <laughs> Bethany in videos has kind of like, like slyly rubbed it in her, like Kristen's face, that Bethany has natural born kids as opposed to Kristen's adopted kids, which um, that's, that's lovely. Nothing beats that good old fashioned Christian love, huh? So as you guys know, we got married in 2011 and we were open to having kids from day one. We were actually really excited about the prospect and, and that was kind of the plan, right? I mean, we were planning <laughs> on this. It wasn't, it was kind of one of those things like, hey, okay, this is what happens when you get married yeah. and you're not preventing and that's gonna come, that's gonna come along. As your one rolled into year two, that's when I started really getting concerned. Like, okay, this is really abnormal, it seems. You know, like, why aren't we getting pregnant? And then literally after our second anniversary, we got married in the summer, second anniversary, I got pregnant. And then six and a half weeks into that pregnancy, I miscarried. And that completely blindsided us. Hmm. Neither of us were expecting that. We were not even thinking that was an option, like that could even happen to us. And so that was super, super hard. <laughs> For the first time in our lives, we're having a baby. Like, like you said, it's like we weren't trying, like we weren't tracking things and trying to get pregnant, but we weren't not, not, like we weren't not trying. We were just kind of living. We were so <laughs> chill. We were so chill, but in a really cool way. Yeah, yeah. it was really good for us and just like yeah. gave us a lot of peace and rest, just knowing whatever would happen would happen. And we just kind of trusted that to God. And so, yeah. so we were married for what, seven months? Before? Uh, uh, yeah, Something I guess like so. that. It's been really interesting because I just had my second baby. I have a little boy and now a little girl. And I am telling you the amount of times that I have heard, oh my goodness, you're so lucky. You got your boy and your girl. Now you're done. And you already have a boy and a girl. So you're absolutely done. When I tell them like, oh, I mean, we don't know if we can have more, but we would love to have more. They're like, oh, wow. Okay. You know, being a wife is so much more than planning nice dinners, keeping the house in order, running errands and doing laundry. Yes, those things are important, but it's so much more more than that. It's about getting on your knees every morning and becoming the biggest prayer warrior for the leader of your family. So being a Christian wife isn't about doing physically useful things like laundry, but it's really about mumbling into the air and doing nothing. Here family, here's a bunch of nothing. Enjoy. Eat this nothing I prepared for you. Sounds great to be honest. I'm a Christian wife every day it turns out. The nothing part, not the kneeling part. I'm like the hobbits in the Lord of the Rings. I kneel for no one. Bethany, stage of life, single, living at home, sponge. Getting married to my Prince Charming by age 21 was my dream in high school. What a sad little life, Beth. Dear Lord, what a sad little life. Hi, Bethany. Pursuing a long-term career in the workforce was never a dream of mine, so I didn't follow the traditional college route. Yeah, of course it wasn't. I also made the radical choice to remain living at home. I decided if I'm going to have roommates, I'd rather they be my family. Yeah, it's such a radical choice to stay at home and be a sponge on your family and not get a job. It's literally like a cult. They can't possibly go out into the real world and, and meet different people or else their views might be challenged, shock horror. In addition to mentoring and hosting Bible studies, I became the director of my church's Awana program for elementary aged girls. I also volunteered at my city's local pregnancy care centre and served as a big sister to some young girls at a nearby public school. I'm not saying all of this to brag, but simply show you that being single has its perks. Trust me, no one thinks that that's a brag. As I write these words, I'm still single. I'm entering my late 20s with no prospects in sight. And you know what? I have peace about it. Do I want to get married? Of course. Is it really hard for me at times? Absolutely. I bet that she's secretly jealous that Kristen married first and younger. 
I bet. They have a friend called Ashley who was studying to be a lawyer to legally help out the pro-life movement, but it was literally too hard, so she gave up and quit. She doesn't let her small apartment stay in the way of nurturing relationships. With a sincere heart to honour God, she opens her home up by hosting many gatherings, parties and dinners. She reaches out to others and invites them to her space on a regular basis. What do you think those parties are like? Do you, do you reckon they think it's getting out of hand once someone gets the hummus out? Is hummus too spicy for them? Or do you think a lot of these people are actually really hypocrites and so they get the cocaine out and have an orgy? I've met a lot of people in my time lot of variety of people, lots of different types of people. And not all, but a lot of the people who seem to yell the most about traditional family values and nuclear family and traditional and tradition this, tradition that, do drugs and cheat on their partners. For some women, they may love white lace. For me, it's candles. For someone else, they yeah. may go, I hate candles. Someone yeah. else, they may go, I love, um, I love water. So I want to take a bath together. And I mean, I love the idea of like have your sex journal where you're actually making mm -hmm. lists. Okay. And you know, that's a lot for us early on, like sexy Scrabble. Like we put, we played board games that we, we changed all of it to be something with sex. Study guide. Practice hospitality today, have some fun, bake one dozen cookies or your favorite dessert and give them to someone who needs encouragement or make a homemade card and deliver it to a neighbor or a friend. I live in England, you big freaks. If I gave a neighbor a homemade card, they'd think it was anthrax and call the police. Chapter eight. This chapter begins with the story of Kylie Bisuti, a former Victoria Secret model who later turned into a Christian housewife. After one year of living as a supermodel, Kylie had experienced enough. To the complete shock of the modeling world, she chose to end her modeling contract. By the grace of God, her eyes had been opened to the true value of her body and worth as a woman. She no longer felt the need to gain the acceptance and approval of others. She had no interest in showing her body off to the public. She was sick of being viewed as an object and not a real woman. So close to getting it, but never quite closing the deal. Also, if she was living as a supermodel, I bet she saw a lot of shit that probably turned her from one extreme to the other. I mean, I've watched stuff where former models talk about being forced to do drugs, to stay working all the time and to stay skinny and kind of being passed around at parties as sex objects and stuff. It's all out there for people to read. I'm not even being a conspiracy theorist. Former models have said that. So maybe like she saw that kind of stuff go on and that made her run into the other extreme direction. Can you blame her though? Being hot or average isn't the determining factor for a woman's security and value. The truth is, whenever a woman bases her worth on what other people think of her, she will never measure up. No woman is perfect. No woman. So why should I base my worth on what you would think of me and my life? It goes both ways, babes. No woman can ever adequately live up to the ideas and opinions of every person she comes in contact with. No woman can wake up every day looking runway ready. It's unrealistic and impossible. They're so close. Humans have a history of placing a high importance on physical beauty. Although the definition of what is beautiful varies from culture to culture. In America, the emphasis on appearance has become an intimidating beast. Beauty no longer feels like a gift from God, but rather a living nightmare. The absurd expectations our culture puts on women are depressing and create an impossible reality. Impossibly close, more like. One time Kristen got hair extensions and she loved her hair and it made her really vain, but then it got knotty. So she had to take them out and cut some of her hair off because the knots were too big. And somehow this is an interesting enough story to relay, relay on us. It's a real life lesson about not being vain. What a sheltered little life, Kristen. Lesson number two. A woman will feel content with her physical appearance only when she stops basing her worth and value on what others think of her and instead starts living to please Christ. The first bit is perfect and then it's ruined with, but only Jesus can judge your looks. My dude, Jesus, was a bloke. I'm not seeking validation from some dude. You lose sight of the fact that Christ is the only one who can satisfy you. Oh, satisfy, huh? Didn't realize he felt that way. Study guide. Which mirror do you use the most in your house? Go to that mirror and write this on it. Use a dry erase marker, lipstick, toothpaste, or whatever you can find that will easily wipe off. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hand, I sing for joy. I would do, but then my boyfriend might think that I've finally lost the plot and have me lobotomized. But maybe then I'll be able to enjoy this book more. Chapter nine. 
Bethany, my view of love and romance was subtly being shaped by the culture around me. As the years went on, I began forming a running checklist of what true love looked like. I imagined my future husband to be physically gorgeous and practically perfect in every way. He would be my knight in shining armor. So what's funny about this is she's passive aggressive now about her husband um, constantly, about how she basically had to lower her ideals and standards and be happy with what God had given her. And hey, it's okay that like, you know, he's a bit shorter than her because she's six foot. It's okay. She doesn't care, which is why she goes on about it all of the time. Little things like that. My knee was bothering me this morning. Mama said that it was okay. And so for me, to be totally honest, marrying someone who was shorter than me back in the day would have been like hard, fast deal breaker. Like, are you kidding? No way. Must be taller. Must look like this. Boom, 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 boom. You know? But as I really started to surrender my heart to God and realize like my life is about building his kingdom, things like Dave being shorter than me really became a non-issue because I was like, why does that matter? What's the big deal? Like if we, if we make a better team for God together than apart, like who cares if I'm an inch and a half or two inches taller and look really tall because I'm already a girl, you know, like that doesn't matter. Who cares if I'm five and a half years older than him? If we truly make a team better together than apart, mm -hmm. then like, shouldn't that be my primary desire? And shouldn't that be what fuels my interest in a guy anyways? Mm -hmm. And so those were all the work works that the Lord was doing in my heart that brought me to the place of actually being interested in Dave. And I don't think for either of us, we would have been interested in the other person if we hadn't really chose to surrender to the Lord and want to live for him because it, neither of us were just on each other's radars. Like we were just in different places in life, but it was through that surrender that I think God really brought us together. An article by the Daily Mail stated that the average woman will kiss 15 men, enjoy two long return relationships and have her heart broken twice. If that isn't bad enough, how is that? I don't understand. What do you mean? How is that bad? That's just life. You no, know, two long-term relationships, getting experience from each one, learning who you are, developing yourself. What? You know, when I was younger in my previous relationships, I was awful. I was horrible. I was toxic and messy and just had a chip on my shoulder and was never trusting or anything. And I feel like I needed to go through that and learn to not be a shit, to, to grow up and be an adult. You know what I mean? Imagine having none of that experience and then the first relationship you ever get into, you, you get married. She'd never even kissed anyone else before. Oh God. And the husband is coming out now saying about how his marriage has made him so miserable. It's, you can find it, it's all out there. It's like, no wonder. It's a, like her first ever relationship at the grand age of 30. I wonder if she's emotionally stunted. I'm talking about Bethany here. You should only be in the relationship as long as it takes you to figure out if you want to get married each other. Like, why are these relationships that are going for like three years? Like, what is the purpose? Yeah, what are you What's doing? What, what are you doing? You, I, I don't see the purpose of dating when you are yeah, like, you can't get married. Like, okay, you're 16. And you're like, well, I don't even want to get married until I'm 21. Like, so I don't see a lot of purpose in starting to date then. This is hilarious. But the way that I actually even learned about what sex actually was, like what was happening, I did not even understand what it really was until I was probably like 20 and I was babysitting at somebody else's house and they had a children's book that oh was for my. kids explaining like what actually happened. And I literally was like 20 when I finally realized like, oh my goodness, like body parts have to come together. Like a penis actually goes inside like, whoa, you know, way too, way too TMI, but I, you know, okay. I, I was a, I was virgin on my wedding night. I, it was like my, you know, I was all the things, like the first kiss, all the things. And my, when I saw my husband for the first time, honestly, my thought was like, oh my gosh, like, how's that ever gonna fit inside of me? Like, it's massive, you know, like, how is that? But, you know, I'm like, I've put tampons out there, but this is like a whole new level, you know? And so honestly, I remember mentally being kind of like, how does this work? And We're gonna share five things, five tips to thrive in your first year of marriage. Uh, these are these are our ideas on what it really takes to have a first year that sings. This is what we should have done our first year. <laughs> hey, we did a lot of these. Yeah, yes. All right, um, the first thing is to forgive quick. When your spouse does something that you don't like, um, be gracious <laughs> and speedy and your actions of forgiveness. I got to a point basically four years into our marriage where I just kind of hit a big wall of disappointment and um, went to get counseling. 
Mostly, mostly thinking you should get counseling. I was mostly thinking really Bethany should get counseling. She yeah. definitely presented a more optimistic picture. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that in some ways you have thought more optimistically or if, even if I were to ask, you would say you were happy. Yeah. I was miserable. I think you were, you were calling, you were like, I just don't know. I can't really make you happy. And you know, I'm pretty happy. That's more yeah, what yeah, you were yeah, saying yeah, at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, but I was pretty miserable for good reason. If that isn't bad enough, further statistics show that 40% of all marriages end in divorce. Gotta be really ironic when Beth's husband divorces her, huh? Did you pick agape? If so, nice job. The Greek word agape is mentioned 259 times in the New Testament. If the Bible repeats something 259 times, we should pay attention. Yeah, and if I start banging my head against the wall repeatedly because of this book, People should pay attention to that too. We must allow God to define our view of love. Must we? Was he showing love when he was blowing up Sodom and Gomorrah? Was Jesus showing love when he found a fig tree that bared no fruit so then he cursed it to never ever bear fruit again for no reason? True story, as true as the Bible is. Gender roles are close to extinct. This is so American centric because how are you going to say that with a straight face about Russia, China, Japan, Africa, the Middle East? <laughs> Maybe if you'd bothered to travel in general or travel outside your bubbles, you'd see there's an entire world that exists out there. Yeah, some people in the West are abandoning gender norms. Why not? Good for them. Live how you want. Just don't do murders. But most people actually aren't. Most people are not abandoning gender norms or identities or, or whatnot. Most people are still doing the marriage, kids, heterosexual stuff. <laughs> I say that as if I'm not heterosexual. You know, like, the, like what the straights are doing. Most people are like still doing that. This is rubbish that conservatives exaggerate to fear monger as if someone being, I don't know, gender fluid has anything to do with them in the first place. Like grow up and mind your business. Why? Because God created us to be women for a reason. Okay, so if God created everything for a reason, then why did he create some people to be gay or trans? <laughs> Since the man is created to be the leader, this clues us in on who should be the initiator and pursuer in the relationship. Since the woman is created to be the helper, this clues us in on who should be the responder. You know that Bethany totally wears the pants in her marriage, right? These women would not be able to be on YouTube if it wasn't for progressivism and feminism. And surely in God's eyes, Bethany shouldn't be spending her time running girl defined. She should be focusing on raising her kids and doing her miserable marriage and having a bad sex life, right? And I say the bad sex life thing because Rachel did a video on Bethany's course about intercourse. And it's full of misinformation too. You'll just have to go watch her video. But it's like, babes is having a bad sex life. They're like, okay, I just want to make this happen. Like, I just want to have an orgasm and I'm, I'm working so hard on it. And so like this exact scenario, you're working hard on it. You know, you're trying, you're trying to do all of the things, but you start to feel like your genitals are literally turning raw, like raw meat, because mm. there's so much rubbing and it starts to become mm -hmm. painful. We've tried so hard and it's literally going on like two hours and there's just, it, it's just painful now. Like there's just, it's raw meat down there. So mm -hmm. what's happening? Yeah. What's going on? How can we like fix this? At this point, I started to just get so annoyed that I couldn't be asked for much more of this. And so this video, we don't have that much further to go. Spoiler alert, I didn't finish the book properly. I skimmed the rest. And at this point, I discovered, did some Googling, that Bethany is 35, 35 and still talks like an emotionally stunted fool in her videos and podcasts. I listened to some recent ones just to get at it. She doesn't sound mature, does she? So when it comes to certain aspects of infertility, you have to go into the, you know, wherever you're going to the doctor's office. And sometimes they're, you know, wanting you to, uh, especially for the man to produce, um, you know, right there and they're like okay we need you to go into this room and make it happen because we need it to shoot up in her or whatever you know it's right. very it's so personal infertility right. and trying to get pregnant it's like you just have no privacy yeah we've had to do that twice um and <laughs> the first time it was just like wait what <laughs> oh, yeah like i've seen this happen in movies or on shows before but like <laughs> um now we're actually in the room i thought self-consciousness is what ultimately got adam and eve kicked out of the garden of eden why isn't bethany more self-conscious it might do her some good and i say self-consciousness because eve bit into the apple and then she realized for the first time that she was naked and she felt self-conscious and so they covered themselves up and then god was like why are you covering yourself up what's going on and they 
were like, well, we can see properly now for the first time because we ate the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge. And then God was like, you bitches, you're out of here. Why do I know any of that? If we want better results from our romantic relationships, we need a better course of action. Instead of using our feminine strength to dominate, let's channel our influence in a direction that will actually encourage men to be men. Again, isn't Bethany always being passive aggressive about her hus how her husband isn't as manly as she would have liked or um, taller than her and stuff? It's unlikely that you will regret having been too pure. I pray you will join me in the fight for purity. May your romantic relationships be marked by God's character and design for marriage. Love, Bethany. Again, aren't you now doing a sex course to desperately learn the sex education you lacked growing up and desperately trying to put a little bit of spice in your flaccid sex life? This is so bitchy and mean. Here, Bethany, if you want a bit more like spice in your sex life, top tip, use this. Disclaimer, please don't actually put chili anywhere near your bits. Zach and I fight for our marriage by setting up boundaries and guardrails of protection. Here are some of the things I do to safeguard my heart. For example, I never flirt with other men, even on social media sites. So that's fine, good, yeah. Don't do that, duh. This is a slippery slope that never leads in a good direction. I'm intentionally never alone with one man in a car room. Didn't that geezer? the old bloke, Mike Pence, do the same. Although this might sound extreme, my goal is to create a large buffer between me and the first step of compromise. So all I'm hearing when people have to do this, literally be away from the opposite sex, all I'm hearing is that you just, you can't trust yourself to be alone with any crusty old man in case you want to hump him, which is wild. <laughs> Chapter 10. No, I can't be asked anymore. I'm sorry. Goodbye. It just, it got too repetitive. It's just worship God, don't have a career, don't do anything for yourself, worship God, be a helper to man, be subservient, like that's it. I was done with it. I skimmed through the rest. Jesus Christ, the king of the universe. King of the universe, not just earth, the universe. That is very presumptuous. What about all the aliens out there who don't know that Jesus Christ specifically existed? Huh? By the way, now that America has realized that yeah, aliens exist, <laughs> what about all the aliens out there who haven't heard of the, the, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the salvation, right? Are they just doomed to go to hell because of something they weren't aware of in the first place? Puh. Can we get an amen from all the sisters out there? We're talking directly to you, girl. Yep, sisters in Christ all the way. We, we may not be related by birth, but we are related through the blood of Christ. Then I want a DNA test. This book defeated me. I couldn't put up with it. I couldn't do it. Even Fifty Shades of Grey didn't manage to do that. I still managed to read that page by page, even though I had to break it up into two separate videos. I still managed it. But this book defeated me. This rubbish, this nonsense. So on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to follow me on Instagram, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out Balesa for a free vibrator. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.